have more women leaders, would we have a more peaceful world? Uh, I actually think that right now, um, women have a big responsibility to lead a lot of the um, transformation that's happening around how we define success, how do we define work, because basically the world as it is now has been designed by man and it's not working. <laughs> there, are, there are a few good men who are very necessary. <laughs> <laughs> but if you think of it, you know, we had the first women's revolution, which was women getting the vote. The second women's revolution, which was uh, led by Betty Friedan in the States and Gloria Steinem, which was basically having access to every job at equal pay, every position at the top of every field. And now I think there is the third women's revolution, which is redefining what success and work are. So instead of simply saying, I want to be at the top with you where you are, just saying, is this really the best way to run a business? Is this the best way to run uh, our world? And women are saying no. Many, many women are saying we need to actually change the corporate structure in which we are competing, change the political world in which we are competing, not just compete on the terms that men created. And you know what? Men, when these changes happen, and they are happening, men are going to be incredibly grateful. <laughs> in, in the making of life, in the very nature in which we are, there is something called as masculine and feminine. Unfortunately, we have created a world where our idea of success and well-being is overwhelmingly masculine. I'm… I mean, you must understand, I'm not talking about male and female, I'm talking about masculine and feminine. A man is capable of being as feminine as he wishes to be in terms of his thought, in terms of his emotion, when he wishes to be. Similarly, a woman is as capable as a man to be as masculine as she wishes when the situation demands or when such actions are needed. Right now we have, create we have created education systems which are purely masculine, which is producing women also. Whether you like it or not, unfortunately, the idea of success has become masculine. Those who want to be successful, even if they're women, they're becoming like this, which is a serious damage to humanity. If you take away the feminine from the world, everything that's gentle, everything that's beautiful, everything that's aesthetic, everything that is the subtler aspect of life will disappear and only providing and survival aspect of life will exist. Right now, there is a serious concern about this. See, twenty-five years ago, <clears throat> in a normal conversation, nobody would think it's worthwhile discussing economy, isn't it? We talked about the weather, we talked about juicy things in the town. We never talked about the economy. Today in every conversation, everybody is talking about the economy. Economy means livelihood, economy means providing. This is purely masculine in nature. I'm not saying women cannot provide, I'm not meaning men and women, I'm talking about masculine and feminine. If you make the society so overwhelmingly masculine, you will obliterate the feminine. In this, everything that's gentle and beautiful will vanish, even in a woman, because when you set the standards that this is the only way you can succeed, even she will adapt to the situation, which I feel they are adapting and many women are expressing their masculinity much more stronger 
and cruder than a man. It is happening. This is distressing because if I'm allowed to share something from my life, you know, uh, those days uh, when we were growing up, my father is a physician, he is the provider. My mother never earned a rupee in her life, but it was never such a thing that if she does not earn, she's something less. No, she was the most valued person. As a child, when I look back and see, with all due respect, when I look back and see, in the way my life evolved, I could very easily live without my father, but I cannot imagine my life without my mother. She never earned anything, but that's not the point. Where the money came from didn't make a difference, but how it was done in the home was everything. I must tell you the simple things. She did everything in the house, from stitching to embroidering to cooking to everything, because uh, she wouldn't want anybody else to do it for her husband and children. She wants to do it herself. If we travel somewhere, if we have to sleep, if she saw an empty pillowcase, you know when you travel somewhere else, there's just white pillowcases, she would say, how can children sleep on empty pillowcases? And she would pull out her needle and thread right there. In five minutes, she stitched a small little parrot or a flower. This little green parrot, I stared and I slept. It is so deep in my consciousness today, that little green parrot, because that sense of that caring, I think that little green parrot sank so deep into me and in many ways who I am today is a manifestation of that little green parrot that she stitched on that pillowcase. <clears throat> so, this is feminine. I am not saying everybody has to embroider, but I am saying that sense that sense of concern is feminine and this needs to happen. In the system of yoga, when you… you know, the hatha yoga is a common word being used everywhere without knowing the meaning generally. Hatha means… ha means sun, ta means moon. That means balancing the masculine and the feminine within yourself. Only when these two things are properly balanced within you, you are a full-fledged human being, otherwise you are a lopsided human being. The Adi Yogi, who is the originator of yoga, I know in California you think it's Madonna who did it <laughs> Adi Yogi is symbolized as the ultimate symbol of man. And how he is symbolized is, all the images are one half of him is woman, another half is man. He is the ultimate man but one half is woman, another half is man because a true human being is an equal balance between masculine and feminine. And in workplaces, I don't see why gender should even be an issue. Why should you always look at somebody as a man or a woman? You can just look at them as a human being or as a piece of life.